On this episode, we admit we had already plenty of explosions. That is, however, not enough. We invent new euphemisms for skipping parts of the tutorial. I'm delivering to you the value of prototyping, okay? Also, we do the hard, hard work. Get me all of those delicious pickups. Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs Academy. This is episode 93. This is the hyper episode. <laughs> let's go hyper everybody. So um, let's do the hyper part here. So this is, a, this is really, this is for sure gonna be the gameplay episode. So in our prototypes, we figured out that we want to have a hyper mode in our game. So the idea is that when you press the button right now, a bomb explodes. That's not the way it's supposed to go. The way it's supposed to go is you sh you charge up a meter and when the meter is over a certain threshold, when you then press the bomb button, then you go into hyper mode. And then in the hyper mode, you're the, the, the meter takes down again. It takes down where you press the button again, you explode. Then 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 you get the bomb, right? I'm gonna figure out that little last part. That's gonna be anyway, it's gonna be hyper meter that means to charge up and when you want to trigger the hyper. So yeah, let's do that. Let's how about we do that, huh? How about we just do that? We're gonna have a little hyper section here. It's not that difficult. So we want to have a charge, <clears throat> and we, like the, the charge is charging up, right? And then we want to have a charge max. Mm, we're gonna set it to 400. These things maybe, because we're putting them in variables, because I want to be maybe to tweak them a little bit, mm, but at the end, when, when everything is like set in stone, we could remove them and just like hard code those values. It's fine. I want to also have a charge for a pick. Um, and I figured out 13 is good charge for the pick. <laughs> ask me, ask me how I arrived at 13. And we're gonna go with charge for hit. And that is gonna be 0 0.3. You know, this is the value. <laughs> I'm delivering to you the value of prototyping, okay? <laughs> Figuring out those values. That, that took a while. That took a while to figure out those numbers. And maybe they're wrong, maybe they're wrong, but they felt good. Okay, so the basic the idea is that when, when an enemy gets hit, we want to increase that charge. And when we pick up a pickup, we also want to increase that charge. A, a pickup is worth a lot more than just hitting an enemy. On the other hand, we're gonna hit up hit an enemy multiple times, right? So the hits are, are gonna stack up. Quite quite rapidly. Um, so let me let me first of all debug. Uh, we don't longer want to draw the number of picks on the screen. What I want to do now, I'm going to put it all the way down here. Is that still update? Yeah, yeah. Debug um, number one. We're going to put charge on the screen. And now when we hit the enemy, hit enemy. Uh, I want charge plus equal, well, charge equals char, um, max, charge max, charge, or oh, min, this would be min, min, charge plus charge uh, hit, right? Charge hit. Let's, let's call it ch hit, because it's very long. Ch, ch pick and ch. Ch, ch, ch hit. Um, charge ch hit. So we're adding a little bit of a charge whenever we hit into the enemy. And we also um, do picks. There we go. We want to do the same thing. We want to do the same thing when we pick up the enemy. Uh, pick up the enemy. Pick up a pickup. Uh, that's going to be here. So these are the physical effects, the visual effects, and here's the, the, the charge that we get. Ch pick. Let's see. So you see, we got three charge from, from hitting that enemy. Ah, oh, look at how much charge we got. Ah, oh, sick. Sickening. <laughs> okay, we're getting a lot of charge from the bomb, but that shouldn't, shouldn't this shouldn't be the, the bomb is fake, it's a fake bomb. Look, now we're maxed out at 400. Now our charge has been maxed out. Ah, isn't that perfect? 
Okay, all right, so now I want to implement all of the mechanics that I talked about. So when I when a charge is over 200, which is half of 400, there's a threshold. Maybe I should code it in here. Let's code it in here. Charge THRS threshold, that's gonna be 200. So when a charge is over 200, that's when you can do the hyper, when the hyper is active, right? So let's let's implement the hyper. So it's here when we do the bump, right? Usually we do the bump, but now we do something very different. So we're gonna go if um, charge is greater or equals charge thirst, then we first of all let's do the bomb. Let's do the bomb. Let's just see how that works. And then when we do the bomb, we're gonna go charge. And we're gonna reset the charge, right? So we, we see see now pressing the bomb, nothing happens. See, if still not nothing happens. Now we, we can press the bomb. And that, that bomb's in, we, we're charging up the bomb now. So that's that's nice, right? But we do not want to go charge the bomb. We wanna go go hyper. Or, or let's go hyper on, so we can later do the hyper off. Um, and we're gonna do this in gameplay. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep this hit enemy on top. I think this is very important. But underneath, we're gonna go. You know what? Let's put it in here. This is the bomb. Let's do the bomb and hyper. Function hyper on, and then we're gonna also do a hyper off. There is different opportunities where hyper will turn off. We're gonna we're gonna talk about unsafe in a second. First of all, I want to have a hyper equals true. I just want to have a a simple variable that that tells me if we if we are doing hyper. Right? And maybe that's for now. For now, that's it. <laughs> and then an update function. Um, we're gonna do it here. Maybe let's do it here. So the idea here is that if hyper, then uh, hyper mm, uh, no, charge minus equal one, and then if charge is smaller or equal zero, then Hyper off is is what I'm is what I'm thinking. I'm not sure if we're actually gonna need hyper off. Because false charge equals zero. I'm, okay, now we we will see something. So I want to see that uh, that happen. Okay, so we need to build up our charge. Okay, and now now I the hyper is on. But we don't see anything at all, so that's horrible. Ugh, that's 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 horrible. So let's now do the things that the hyper does. So what I want to do with the hyper is first of all, uh, I want to see visual difference. I, I want the, some, something to happen to the ship. I want our shots to be look different, and I don't want to create a new sprite for that. I'm too lazy to create new sprites. We're gonna <laughs> lazy devs, or we're gonna just turn the shots white, and then. I obviously want to down the line. I want to do damage, and there's going to be some more stuff happening with hyper. There's going to be like the way scoring works will do work differently during hyper. But for now, uh, let let me do the visual feedback. So first of all, let me draw uh, the ship here. Right here's the ship. Yeah, this is the ship and the op. This is drawing the ship with the options. All right. So here, when the ship is flashing white, maybe it doesn't really matter. But otherwise, if hyper, then. Now, here are some things that I want to happen when hyper is happening. And this is something that I've been experimenting a little bit. I'm not sure. First of all, I think uh, that's why I want to make um, have the ability to change the color of the outline. You remember, we, we colored the outline pink. Uh, now I want to be able to maybe have a different outline. For example, seven, right? Or maybe we should always start with uh, enough charge to immediately trigger the hyper because we just want to see if this works. See, now it looks already pretty sweet if I have the white outline, right? Um, but maybe I want this to be a little bit spiffier and maybe I want it to actually flash a little bit. So let me see. Uh, I had a 
yeah, R and D, just like do R and D. Um, seven six, right? So just flash between gray and white, a little bit, right? So here, it, it this looks a little bit more energized. I think this makes more sense a little bit. Um, right. But I think we can go one more. Um, and I, there's a really nice effect that I, I found. So we're gonna fill the pattern. Oop, we're gonna do a fill pattern. We're gonna use this. And we're gonna turn it off again. And then we're gonna draw a circle underneath the ship. That's what I want to do, a circ fill. PSPR X, PSPR Y, so underneath the ship. Underneath the ship, ship means a little bit further down, like plus two. And the size is gonna be eight, and the color is gonna be seven. And then we're gonna do it again, but this time it's just gonna be a circle. So there's gonna be a bit of an aura around the ship. This is kind of quite often something you see in shmups. You see kind of like different, different like glows around the ship, right? And this time we're gonna make it 12. Yeah, some something like this. It's a little bit. We don't. You don't, don't actually see the the initial circle. Let's start with. Let's just start with full four hundred charge. Uh, it, it is a little bit static. It is a little bit static, uh, and also you don't see the in, inner circle. That's something that bugs me a little bit. So um, let us add some um, some sign to this. Sign of time. And I had a number there that was good, multiplied by two. Let's try that. Times three. And then we're gonna add the same thing to the outline. Like this, like this, let's try that. Okay, so we now you see a little bit of an aura. Um, the inner circle, we don't see that well, I have to say. So let's, let's bump up maybe the radius of that inner circle. Now, now it's just like this. Maybe we don't need that inner circle at, at all. Like maybe just this outer circle is enough. Yeah, that's, that should be enough. Maybe 11 is better? Yeah, that's better. So it looks a little bit glowy, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a aura around our ship. ship. Not to be confused with the aura that actually does damage to, to enemies. Just a little bit of a of a more of a visual impact. Okay. okay. That is, however, not enough. So something I want to do next is I want to actually um, interact with the or I want to change the look of the shots. And this is where where we do this. So here's where we're drawing all of the shots, and we're gonna say like um, we actually can do this here. If hyper, then and how shots, and then we're gonna go pal. Now, this is gonna be a, a bit of a waste, but whatever. So, we're gonna change the 10 to 7. And what is the other color that we have with the shots? So, oh wait, that's not a shot here. Uh, so that's just 9 and 10, both need to get changed to 7. So now the shots get turned to white. It looks a lot... Like, the shots make such a huge difference. Like, the way your ship looks is fine, but the shots are the thing that makes a difference. Uh, okay, this is good, but I think something that really uh, pushes the, it over the line, I think, is making the shot sound effect sound different. Because wait. No. Where's the sound effect? Do we ever use the sound of the sound effect? I think we use this now. Okay, let's override this sound effect. I think this is this last the uh, old explosion. So let's uh, take this one. So this is the shooting sound effect. And I want to uh, repl or replace it. I want to add a different sound effect that is going to be the, the hyper shot sound effect. I'm going to paste it in here. It's a little bit subtle, but it's going to be more of a laser-y sound effect. Let me show you the notes. 
right and then we're gonna go sfx zero when we're shooting or shoot where is where is it sfx zero three there we go uh we're gonna go hyper and one or zero right something like this immediately it feels very different sounds different and uh, it looks very different the white shots really pop it's fantastic that's great now the shot the actual shot type doesn't change and that's something i was considering maybe making the shot a little bit narrower um, but that's maybe something i'm gonna just do later on i just want to lay down the basics first now one of the main reasons why i have like this, this dedicated hyper on uh function is that i actually i actually don't want the the hyper to be like just like turning on and nothing else happens i want to actually do like a little hit stop the way we do it with a bomb i want to pause the game for a couple of seconds and actually do a special sound effect to like in, to, to make it a bit more you know in, exciting to go into hyper and again <laughs> to make the gameplay work is very easy but making the visual effects, the communicating the, the game state to the players, that's actually that's what takes time. So we basically use the same thing that we use for the bomb. Um, this time we're gonna freeze, what did they write down? Uh, 30, we freeze for a half a second, right? And then call Y is gonna be high while, and then call back is gonna be high end. And then function high while, and then function high end. Maybe we're gonna do them in line in a second, but let's 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 figure out how that will work. So I want the flash ship to be true. I want the ship to be completely white. And we're going to end. Uh, this is not the end of the hyper. This is just like the end of the animation of the hyper. <laughs> so that's gonna be this. Uh, I'm gonna turn it off again. Actually, let's let's make the hyper equals true here, maybe, huh? Right, then I want to also add a sound effect. And again, I'm gonna copy it over so you don't have to watch me creating those sound effects because that can take a while. Let's let's just, uh, can we go? This is an empty, this is a good slot. This is like an old death sound effect. I kind of like this one. So let's use those two for the hyper. So this is gonna be going to hyper. A little bit of a high pitch, blah, 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 you know, like like activating something, like some kind of machine is being activated, some kind of computer uh, triggers, you know. And then this is gonna be going off hyper. This is maybe a little bit too loud. I was I was considering maybe maybe a little bit softer. So just like something, blah, 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 some, some, something powering down. This is maybe a little bit too harsh, but uh, I think this is something which we really only use when you somehow lose hyper, and, uh, because usually we will bump out of hyper. But we're gonna talk about that later on. Okay, so we have now 61 and 60. So let's do it as here, the SFX 60. Let's, let's see how that works. So immediately the little hit stop just adds so much just just because it stops just because it stops just makes it it feel so much more dramatic that you you notice oh something happened now you know uh, I think this is fantastic let me let me try this while something is actually happening on the screen yeah this is sick uh, also by the way I want to also add an inval uh, 60. To this so go after going to hyper the first second after going to hyper we're invulnerable maybe the flashing is, is something we have to reconsider but okay. okay this is not enough so what i want to do now is i want uh, not just like the ship did everything to pause but i want to have like circles like it's as if the ship is gathering power from the ether something like it's charging up right so there should be like like energy being sucked into the ship maybe some magnet is activated and it's sucking in some gravitational waves right something like this so i want to have like this little animation playing out while while this is happening so we're going to create high circ 
Uh, these are just going to be circles, big circles. And I'm going to go, we're going to create a bunch of those. For i equals zero, we're going to create six of them. Do add high circ. And we're going to just put numbers in this in this area. It's just going to be an, an, a number in each number in this circle array. It's going to be just the radius of the circle. 100 plus i times 60, right? So the first circle is going to be 100. The next circle is going to be 160 and 100, uh, 200. 20 and so forth, right? So we're just going, uh, the circles get bigger and bigger. And then in a while, we're going to loop through all the circles. Well, actually, let's just, let's just draw those circles to the screen. So here are the shots. Uh, here's, we should draw them on top of the ship, right? Here's the ship, or maybe underneath the ship. I'm not sure. Where's the, here's the pickups. Here's the bomb, particles, shots. Let's draw them here after the bullet. So on top of everything. Um, so we're going to go if, uh, high circ then for h in all high circ do and I'm gonna go oval two for this PSPR dot x so we're gonna center them around the, the player ship PSPR dot y and I'm just gonna be the number and the number times Purse. So because there should be ovals, because it's, so it looks a little bit more like, you know, and then it's going to be seven because they're going to be white. So let's call it hyper circles. Let's call these bullets. Right, so let's try this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the circles are there. We're creating the circles. They're way outside. That's good. Uh, I want to make sure that at the end, as uh, we reset, we make them uh, go disappear. Nil, right? And so our job now is to loop through all of the circles for i equals zero to a uh, number of high circ. Two. And then we're going to go I circ I uh, minus one <laughs> minus equal one. <laughs> just just see how this works. I just want to see some moves, something moving. Oh, th this didn't work. Oh yeah, yeah. It has to be minus one. Let's just go with from zero to five. Whatever. Okay. We didn't see anything. Oh yeah, minus equal one, yeah. What? Oh, right, 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 right. Has to be one, two, six then. <laughs> a little bit too, a little bit too slow. Okay, <laughs> broadly speaking what we want. Why was there this weird? Sometimes interesting. <laughs> okay, it's good. Oh, by the way, we can go hyper while we're in hyper. That's something we have to uh, we have to make sure that we can't. Uh, yeah, it's we. They have to go. They have to be a lot faster. We're gonna use our favorite um, our favorite <clears throat> equation. Uh, something like this. So they're gonna go fast at the beginning and then and then go slow as they approach the. Player ship. Yeah, see? That looks sick. Yes! <laughs> yeah, that looks sick. Looks really nice and juicy. Um, I want to maybe <clears throat> make the, all of these two functions, I want to make, make them in line and maybe a little bit because I don't like how how we had created a dedicated function for like this just this little bit of code. How did I do it when I did die? Uh, I always forget the syntax for this. Yeah, something like this. So we just do function and then end at the end. Okay, good. So so here is going to be function, function, and end, and then we can just pop this little. It's, it's just a one little for loop, right? We can just put it in here. We don't have to create a dedicated function for this. Same with the high end. It's just we're setting some variables, right? We don't need a dedicated function for this. I think this is a lot nicer. Yes, sick. 
Okay, and then uh, when we do the update, when we go to hyper, we don't want to avoid that we're not going into hyper again. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Um, so we're going to go if hyper then else, right? And so the idea is that if we are in hyper, then I want to bomb. Like this, right? So now I'm hyper, and now in hyper I want to bomb. Now I'm still in hyper, that's... <laughs> That's a bit of an ish. Uh, so that's what we... I wanted to do this here. When we do the bomb band. There we go, bomb band. Um, here I want... If we have hyper, we're gonna set hyper to... F uh, so... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna go hyper equals false. And then, uh, this is gonna be a bit weird, but we're gonna go charge equals... Uh, charge minus or uh, charge equals max zero charge minus uh, charge thirds. Um, the idea here is that, um, and that's kind of like gameplay stuff, I guess. <laughs> that's a little tidbit of gameplay we're doing here. Um, so the idea is that you're triggering the bomb costs half of your charge meter, um, and I initially I had that, but this would create like the situation where if you run out of um, charge while you're in hyper mode, you then you couldn't bomb out of charge hyper mode. And bombing out of hyper mode was really fun. So I always give you the opportunity to bomb even if you don't have that charge. But if you have more than half charge, if you go to to hyper and then immediately bomb, then you lose half of your charge. And then you can you still have some charge left, and then you can maybe charge it up more quickly. It's a little bit of a weird thing to explain, and I'm worried that it's a little bit weird to, to, to explain. But it feels okay. It's just like when you're in hyper mode, you're you're playing, and now I'm below 200. I can bomb, and then I'm down to zero, but I still could bomb. But if I'm at 400, I can bomb immediately, and then I'm still almost at at the threshold to to go hyper again, right? So you get more charge if you let the hyper run out. Oh, so in call while there was a problem with a with a circ. Why did we why did we get that, that error? I'm gonna write this down. We're gonna we're gonna try to keep this down. Uh, track this down. Uh, hyper high circ error. High circ. Yeah, this only happens if high circ is something. It wasn't called while. It's weird. Do we do a while after we do an end? Is the, can that happen? Oh, it can happen, obviously. Mm. Always got to remember. Call while ABS. We have to make the... Okay, we, we, we got it. I think it was basically calling um, the, the hyper while when I die. Let me let me try this. So now I'm okay. Well, now I fixed the problem. But there we got it. Right. Okay. So let us now do the, all the other effects of the hyper. So first of all, I want end hyper, hyper off. I want there to be sound effect. I think it was sixty one, right? Is it sixty one? Okay. Yeah. So let me let me test this if this works. I want um, to start with charge of 200 and I want to trigger it immediately. Okay, so we're running, we're shooting, we're having a good time. And then we run out of hyper. Okay, that's good. Oh, also, by the way, if I get hit, I also want to uh, stop hypering. So die. So freeze 30, flash ship equals true. Um, hyper equals false or basically if hyper then and hi hyper right something like this we're gonna have two sound effects at the same time so maybe that's not good i'm gonna see how that works so i have hyper i want to get hit Ooh. and hyper no not end hyper hyper end right hyper off hyper off Yes, perfect. Uh, 
I think, especially when you get hit during hyper, that sound effect that really makes you feel like you did something wrong. I think this is great. Okay, and then finally, uh, something I want to do is obviously I want the I, I want the hyper to be doing more damage, um, and it's it's kind of not sure. I'm not quite sure how much damage it should be. Uh, in prototype, I had it um, so it does 50% more damage. So let's go. Let's let's just do it like this. So we're gonna go hi hyper malt, and we're gonna put it to 1.5. So we can like still tweak this, right? Or maybe you should because we have like also like this here, like shot DMG, right? Hmm. And let's 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 put it like in a hyper malt. And then when we uh, check the collision detection, actually, uh, because we, the hyper malt shouldn't apply to bombs, obviously. I think um, because the bombs are always going to be in hyper anyway. Um, then let's see update. Here's where we colliding the shots. The enemy, there we go, has hit. Um, shot DMG, multiplied. Well, maybe maybe we should we should do it like a two step process. So we're gonna go uh, low 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 cat low cat uh, DMG equals shot DMG. Multiplied by hyper malt, hyper and hyper malt or one, something like this, right? I know I'm not sure if I need this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna run this for for first, and we're gonna see if this works. Uh, and then we're gonna see if we maybe can get rid of this. No, but I think it will. It will won't work. Oh, well, maybe it does work. Let's let's see if uh, debug one equals DMG. Uh, not not one two. What? Oh, right, right, right. Okay, got it. This is this is this is actually the aura hit. The, this is the aura hit. We want to have the real hit. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, I think I'm doing something wrong here. But yeah, let's 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 try it first. If this works, this approach works, and then I'm gonna try a different approach. I think. But first, let's see if this, this even works. Yeah, okay, this doesn't work. We have to, we would have to do something like this. Yeah, so now it's 0 0.7. And if I go, this is this one, 1.05. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. But um, that's not how I want to do because there's a lot of calculations and it doesn't apply to the aura and I want maybe the aura to be affected by this. So maybe something what we're going to do is, is going to go um, DMG malt and it's going to be uh, hyper and high, uh, where is it? Hyper malt or one. Right, so and then we're gonna multiply it. We're just gonna multiply shot DMG multiplied by DMG malt. That's gonna be a lot easier and and more straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 the way to go. So right, since so I'm shooting here, I'm gonna shoot at the big enemy. A while, but eventually you get it. But then you go hyper mode, and then it's like ah, you'll get it immediately. Ah, oh no, I missed the bomb. I didn't bump out. Okay, one last thing about the hyper that is that makes things different. 
uh, w when in hyper, the enemies shouldn't spawn cows anymore. Now it should spawn uh, stars. Um, so let's let's fix that real quick. That was kind of like part of our, our gameplay kind of stuff, right? So here, there is go, there we go. There we have spawn pick, and uh, in, we're just gonna dump in hyper in here. So in hyper mode, we're spawning cow. Uh, not in hyper mode, we're spawning a cow. But if we go hyper mode, we're spawning stars. Isn't that just a peach? This covers a lot of the hyper stuff. So we included a, a general, general hyper mode, but there is an additional level to all of it. And I'm gonna write down some of the things that I wanna do in the future. And that is gonna be the star scoring mechanism. There's a whole mechanism associated with a hyper where stars start spawn and you accumulate them and the stars get more valuable in terms of how much score you get for the stars as you get more. It's, 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 it's this whole thing, right? So we have to implement that whole star scoring mechanism. And then in addition to the star scoring mechanism, what I also need to do is kind of like UI for hyper. Uh, and then also UI for scoring. Right? These are like two aspects that I really want to nail. That I want to have really nice, because right now we have like this stupid number, right? I want to have maybe like a bar that fills up. And for the scoring, I want to communicate clearly how much score you got, right? Um, uh, so that's going to be all part of this star scoring mechanism thing. And there's two little like part of the UI kind of stuff that I had in my original design. And that is like um, uh, hyper end warning. Um, so like if the hyper is about to run out, I want there to be some kind of warning effect. That's not a big deal, but we have to like implement it. But then also I want to have like a bomb ready indicator, right? Uh, and maybe these are kind of like part of the UI for hyper, right? These are kind of like sub, sub aspects of it, right? Uh, uh, something like this. And then we need a UI for scoring and so forth. And if we implement that, if we manage to implement that, there's not going to be a lot of things left. There's not going to be a lot of things left. That's going to be our game. I know it's surprising, but it, we... Yeah. <laughs> it looks already pretty good. I mean, it, it's a very functional game. We can we can go to hyper mode and then we can be like, get me all of those delicious pickups. I mean, this is what the game is all about. I mean... What else do you need, right? Oh, there's maybe one, one more thing I've been wanted maybe do, and that is the um, direct bomb. That's something, or like I call it direct bomb. So like, ooh, when you want to bomb immediately after going to hyper, if, if you just want to bomb, right? If you don't want to go through hyper and then bomb, right? Uh, I want to uh, double pressing the button should bomb. Uh, so yeah, that's something that we also want to in, in, include. Lots of things to do, but I mean, these are the final steps. I'm looking forward to that. For now, I'm gonna say the things I say at the end of each episode. I want to thank you, all of the people who have been supporting this this tremendous project all this time on coffee.com. The address is coffee.com slash lazydesk. If you out there also want to be, become a supporter. And I also wanted to read out another question. This is from Jeff A. Cornell on episode 17. Um, they said that if you want to convey specifically that these are police vehicles without wasting extra sprites on them, you could have the code manually place some blinking blue, blue and red pixels on top of those trucks to give them flashing emergency lights. Um, Absolutely, yes, I could do that. Um, there is a bit of an issue always with these things where, uh, especially in Pico 8, you just don't have that much code, right? We're always struggling to find the, um, the tokens. And so it becomes like really just a matter of a weighing, like how important is that aspect to you, right? The pros and cons. For example, I spend a lot of tokens, no, not a lot of tokens, but I spend a bunch of tokens to make the enemies burn. Uh, but I think this is very important to communicate, you know, something very important to the players playing the game. And it also looks cool and you see it all the time throughout the game, right? It's this, this thing that you invest some tokens in it, but you get a lot out of it, right? It's something that just happens all the time. In this specific case, even though just like it's just like a little piece set at some point, right? You have to make an if statement, you have to position this. It's just a lot of work and a lot of 
additional tokens for a minuscule effect, right? I don't really care that much if people understand if these are poly police trucks or not, right? So in this case, in this specific episode, I was trying to find out a way to communicate that these are police trucks without spending resources. If I really wanted to make people know that these are police trucks, there are obviously a lot of ways to go and this would be a perfectly good way to pull this off, just making some lights blink and so forth. But the that's not the question I'm trying to solve. The question I'm trying to solve is how can I communicate that these are police trucks without spending any additional resources, right? Now something that Jeff actually mentioned here is we could make a like a one pixel sprite. <laughs> We could do like a one pixel sprite and then animate this and then we're gonna spawn an enemy <laughs> that is a one pixel <laughs> blinking sprite that doesn't have any collision or anything. <laughs> that could be possible. <laughs> we have to think about that. The reason why I wanted to specifically address this comment is that I think this is something that is very important for game developers to understand. This is something that you don't understand when you're a player of games and you see obvious issues that could be addressed, right? Because as a player of games, you don't really see the constraints under which the game designer or game developer are operating. But from a game designer or game developer perspective, you want to solve those issues, but there is a whole other problem that you're also trying to solve, which is your constraints, your available resources and so forth. So the question you quite often try to solve as a game developer is not how to solve this problem, but also how to solve this problem and make it fit underneath all those restrictions that I'm also dealing with, you know. It's a slightly different way of thinking about those problems. Anyway, this was this episode. Um, next episode, we are going to do the star scoring stuff. We're gonna do the scoring mechanics and there's not gonna be a lot of stuff left. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.